Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Camera Tuesday. In today's episode, we're gonna take a look at Panasonic's new announcement. So let's dive right into it. So what's happening here, it's like after the announcement that Nikon and Canon both are jumping into full frame mirrorless territory, Panasonic is like, hey, I'm not left out after this. Like I'm also jumping in. So this is the big announcement. Panasonic is releasing a new lineup where they are like, okay, now I'm, I am also gonna compete in full frame mirrorless market. So that's the first number. Second, they're gonna release two cameras, not one, two cameras. And it's literally like Nikon Z and uh, Nikon Z series camera where one would be more focused on, you know, uh, affordability, another would be more focused on performance or like high megapixel. So they are going that same route where they have one 24 megapixel, another 47 megapixel. So this is the whole plan and be mindful this is a preview event so if you see anybody giving you a review or full detail that may not be accurate simply because what this preview event means is basically Panasonic came out and it's like whoa before you spend your money on uh, Nikon or Canon's full frame wait we are releasing something this is not something like you know this is not ready like uh, one uh, basically what you say ambassador also specified that there is a good chance that they're gonna remove this uh, three-way screen and give a flippy screen because enough people complained about it now this is just a hope this is somebody said it i will link the video down below but uh, there is a good chance that they will change some things into this and i'm pretty sure the uh, flip out screen can literally make this camera a killer camera so be mindful this is a preview event this is like what panasonic is working on this is not ready for consumer prime time the best you can hope for is uh, roughly march or uh, april release date they can do it earlier they can rush order this but uh, let's see what happens so as many of you know any new lens uh, camera system specifically with interchangeable lens camera system needs a lens now this is where panasonic did a very grand entrance they flat out came with a what we call L mount. Now, many of you know L mount is known for Leica. It uh, supports APS-C and full frame, which is kind of stupid to say because if you support full frame, supporting APS-C is point, like that's just cropping in. That's pointlessly easy. So this idea that directly coming into the market where you already have lens, already have full frame, high quality, high uh, value lens. Like of course those lens are five thousand dollar, but they are, are there and there are third party L mount lenses already in the market so suffice to say all things considered they have the like they are the only one that can even come close to sony because at this point sony already has a new lens lineup ready like native lineup and canon and nikon both only have like three to four lenses to offer native one i'm not talking adapted one now however because adapter works perfectly on a native system they do get like you know four native lens plus 300 lens so that plus 300 is still a big issue, but here they at least made an entrance where not only Leica releases very high quality lenses. Now, many people say those lenses are overpriced. Fair enough, but at least you have the option. And not to mention there are third party uh, lenses available for this system. So this is what uh, Panasonic is doing. They're flat out coming out and they're like, I'm making a big interest. The biggest hurdle they have is lens and they flat out solved it by using L mount. And the, this whole thing, Panasonic realized that they are really not that good at making lenses. Their lenses are already uh, stamped by Leica or whatever. There is a, some business integration going on and I do not know the full depth of it. And many of you can comment down below, but Leica plays a very crucial role in Panasonic's already, Lumix lineup already. They play as a very crucial role. So suffice to say, Panasonic realizing that they have this issue they made a partnership with Leica of course for their mount system and Sigma for their lens lineup and they've taken a page out straight out of uh, Nikon's uh, press release and they are like our roadmap like rather than releasing lens our roadmap and not to mention these lenses are not finalized that's why you don't see aperture rating on them and only, uh, many people are sure that 70 to 200 is f 2.8 because it does not make sense to make it lower however i'm not sure of that because if it was they would point it out and if it was bigger than that if it was bigger than f 2.8 they would really emphasize on that so they are not doing it so uh, that kind of like you know hurts me suffice to say sigma is known for making high quality lenses at this point sigma already has license for making a uh, native e-mount lens not reverse engineered 
native e mount lenses so suffice to say as you can see sigma is the only one that can give canon or leica run for their money and i'm already using a sigma 17 to 55 millimeter f 2.8 so suffice to say this whole idea is a very good uh, solid entrance this uh, eases people's mind oh will there be enough lenses it already is third party not like our native lenses those are 5000 and if you have those 5000 dollar lenses tada your lens problem solved and who is backing the lens from sigma so suffice to say lens problem they solved it flat out they solved it so we talk about what's happening here why there are so many full frame system inputs one thing you have to understand photography is becoming a more of a niche hobby than it used to be now i'm not talking about photogra photographers i'm talking about vloggers i'm talking about youtubers like me and uh, more and more people are jumping into the situation and they are realizing micro four third was not suited for it everybody is complaining about uh, autofocus performance of panasonic series and you might be like okay it's not that bad it is bad otherwise they would not release firmware update where first line it says uh, improved autofocus performance improved autofocus performance if it wasn't an issue they will say okay now i did you know uh, intervalometer added this 10 bit support internal recording 10 bit in 60 frame per second instead of those things what you are getting is uh, auto focus improvement fix this bug fix that so suffice to say micro four third system not only it's uh, not very you know cheap compared to APS-C as I already made a video about that you can check it out in my last episode APS-C flat out killed micro four third and not to mention micro four third has only been there for 10 years and Panasonic is already like yeah this is limiting so there is not enough room to grow in this and because of its higher cost which came from the fact that they tried to develop a completely new sensor they could have easily gotten away with APS-C sensor but they try to you know get that extra small sensor which does not translate too much because the APS-C lens and this lens is more or less the same size native APS-C lenses and suffice to say the lenses on these puppies are idiotically expensive my APS-C lens is uh, cheaper than micro four third lens because the mass production did not ever you know occur to the same level and it will happen like if you're comparing an 18 year old system versus an 8 year old system so suffice to say this system is doomed from day one if they had stuck with APS-C in this whole system they would have been much more comfortable because lens architecture was already there because they would not have needed to develop a completely new system they could have even gotten phase detect autofocus biggest problem with this directly inbuilt into the sensor so suffice to say this was a kind of short term move they got this put them on the map but they cannot hold their territory so they want to stop the bleeding because of this camera sony a7 III lot of vlogger people people who like you know uh, don't do photography for a living but uh, do other things related to you know they make short movies they make pr promotional videos or they make youtube videos or things of that nature they are jumping into sony system why cost these and these things cost the same like of course now you might say this is available for 1500 dollars uh, and but when they came out both of them had target price of 2000 dollar and suffice to say both of the lenses also cost more or less the same this is why this the fact that micro four third lenses are so expensive it was like final lay in the coffin now you might say okay it's small light nobody cares if you can't buy it money talks so the fact that they are now at a very serious risk being replaced by Canon simply because Canon has undeniably flawless autofocus system, undeniably large lens selection, undeniably cheaper lens selection which higher quality uh, with higher quality also. So the fact and you might say oh it has crop again crop doesn't matter the crop makes it equivalent to this so if you are already used to this instead of buying next panasonic you might simply buy next Canon and many panasonic users already have Canon lenses so suffice to say you see this is this is in very serious danger right now and panasonic knows this no company jumps into new system like you know risking boatload of uh, millions of dollar uh, you know in research and development if they are not sure and will they kill off this system no they will release it one or two but this will become a back burner project because they have to go all out in uh, full frame and they want to compete with big boys right now because at the end of the day full frame has reached a level of maturity as in one century kind of maturity where it is the thing medium format is not a thing like of course it's a niche it's a useful for product photography it pays you a lot more but not everybody is gonna do that and not to mention it's have when was the last time you saw a medium format used for sports photography so suffice to say even though medium format is already there it's not becoming the thing this full frame is the thing APS-C also is not there but this was even behind than APS-C so suffice to say 
they want to compete with that. Why? Because this line is now in danger. And if Canon releases a new camera which has full frame readout, this is dead. Now, any of you like, no, this has way too many features. Features don't matter if you miss focus. Flat out, features don't matter. So this was my presentation on Panasonic's full frame. Hope you liked it or learned from it. In that case, please leave a like. If you did, no worry about it, dislike it. And I would urge you to share it amongst your friend and uh, leave a comment what you want to see in the next episode of Camera Tuesday. And I would say subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.